Good morning. Welcome. It's great to see everybody. Are you awake yet? If not, I'm going to stand here and yell until you are. It's a beautifully blessed day. You're blessed not to be in Western North Carolina right now, are you? Amen. I guess we'll start with the announcements. We've got some new things to tell you this morning. Um, don't forget next Saturday, 4 to 8, the car show. And we still need homemade, homemade desserts, cakes for the raffle. So if you hold, yes, hold, not cut up. And I love you all, but not from Food Line, from your oven or your mama's oven. Homemade cakes for to raffle off, please. And if you could be have those here probably a little before four, that would be great so that they know what they are going to have to auction off. Sunday, October 13th at 6.30, we're going to have a special prayer service. Um, please plan to attend that. I, I, life happens, and everybody gets busy, and we all have good intentions of praying for events. But sometimes we just don't get sincere enough, and I think with everything the way it is in the world today and where we are in society and all the things that we're seeing happening, we need to be praying very hard for our revival. Um, I don't know about you, but life gets, gets difficult sometimes, right? I mean, it's not always a bed of roses. And I need all the help I can get. So please... I hope each and every one of you take that serious and, and start praying now. I'm not saying wait till the 13th to pray, <laughs> but please make an effort to come that evening pre-prayed, if you will, <laughs> pre-prayed up that we can have some see good renewal, restoration, um, that we can see some good things happen during the revival and then October 16th 17th and 18th our revival at 7 o'clock every night the 19th is Jonathan Wilburn at 7 and then the 20th is homecoming and there had been some discussion about it's hard for revival for everybody to get here when you work and it is and you combine working a full-time job with getting off at 5 o'clock, driving home, taking care of Lord knows how many young'uns may. <laughs> Those of you who have Michelle, you know, it's a lot. Um, so the thought was that perhaps we would, we, here we go, we would prepare a small dinner and offer it available to those of you who would like to eat to make sure you're here for the revival. Does that sound good? So that's what Robert wants to talk about right now. Good morning. Um, we've been talking about doing this in, in Deb is right. Um, revival is very important. Wow, that's bright. Um, revival is very important, and we want to make sure that anybody who can be here can be here. Um, so Wednesday night, we're going to prepare spaghetti. Uh, Thursday night will be chicken uh, and rice, and then Friday night will be hot dogs. Now, with that said, um, I need volunteers to help prepare 
and to help clean. So if you would just see me after church, and we'll talk about this, but we're going to prepare um, a meal for each night for up to about 60 people. Um, we're going to serve at 530. So everything has to be 530 so that we're in here on time and ready to praise the Lord. Um, Saturday night with Jonathan Wilbur. Um, some of us had volunteered to do barbecue. Uh, we're not charging for any of this. Uh, the church is going to supply. I just need the volunteers to, to make it happen. Um, you know, it, it, it's about getting people here. Uh, we're going to put the word out. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be on the, the, the phone tree, some various things. But it's all about getting people prepared to come in to praise the Lord. And if it takes getting a little bit of food on the table to get more people to come, then amen. That's what it's all about. Um, so, again, um, volunteers, see me after or see Deb. Uh, we're trying to put it together for each night. We're trying not to have everybody or one person do the whole thing. Um, so, also, desserts. Everybody loves dessert. That's open for anybody. If you want to make a banana pudding, a pound cake, a cake, whatever, um, that's great. But the church will provide the rest. Thank you. But it's the time for us all to chip in, right? Let's all chip in so that on December the 7th we have that senior dinner. Amen. It is a lot. October 27th. Is that right? Trunk or treat? Trunk or treat. October 27th. Sunday night. So, please come participate in that. Don't forget prayer on Tuesdays at 1 and Bible study on Thursdays at 6.30. We don't have any birthdays or anniversaries this upcoming week unless I miss somebody. Did I miss anybody? I didn't think so. But you know, we're blessed. The Hebrew word for blessed is Baruch. Baruch. To bless others and to be blessed is a fundamental part of our relationship with God. as well as our relationship with other people. You know, blessings, whether you're on the giving end or on the receiving end, help us recognize God in our lives. Because God is a blessing. A blessing isn't a recognition of wealth or of riches but it's an humble confession that we can't survive in this life by ourselves. We need God, and folks, we need each other. We do. When you get to the point where you feel like you don't need anyone but yourself, you are sadly mistaken, and your life will end very sadly. But we all need each other. There is a tradition that originated with the Quakers back in the 16th century. It's called a pounding. Have you heard of a pounding? My best, my best most, of you, most of you young people haven't. Right? We used to do poundings a lot. But we've reached a point today where we have an opportunity to provide Baruch to a family of our own. I am asking each and every one of you, 
if you can, if you can't, it's fine. But if you can, we would like to have a pounding for a family that is a member of our church. They call it a pounding because back when all this idea started, everything in a general store was sold by the pound. That's where the name pounding came from. So when they had a pounding, they'd give a pound of sugar, a pound of flour, whatever. It was by the pound. But I'm asking you, could you please next Sunday morning bring some type of non-perishable, don't want fresh vegetables, don't want meat, canned goods, box goods, whatever you can afford to bring and place it on the front pew in the old sanctuary. Just one Sunday is all we need, and we're going to provide that pounding to that family. You can do, if you don't want to go to the grocery store, if that's not what you, you're feeling, yes, gift card from Food Line, grocery store, whatever you want, Walmart, whatever. I'm sure they will be very appreciative of whatever they're given. Does anybody have any questions? It's a family. You know, sometimes blessings are as hard, harder to receive than they are to give. It's easy to flop out your wallet and hand somebody a $5 bill. But it's humbling for someone to walk up to you and say, I know you're in need, and for them to acknowledge it. So we, it's, it's anonymous. I'm sorry. I can't tell you anything. But it will be much appreciated. And I assure you, God will bless you. Amen? Come on, guys. It's great to see you, Wes. I see you all the way back there. Hey, Tammy. That light's bright. Once in a while, I get a glimmer of a face on the back row. Welcome, Marcus. Everybody, tell Marcus thank you for participating in the offering this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much just for the privilege of gathering together today. We thank you for each and every family that's represented here and pray, God, that something that's said or done will bless each and every one. Holy God, we ask that you bless this offering to the upkeep of your kingdom. Bless our singers as they stand before us to lead us in praise and worship of you. And Lord, bless Jeremy as he presents the word that you laid upon his heart for us to hear today. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit move freely among us today. And God, I pray if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, that something that's said or done will cause them to seek you in a greater way. God, to accept you into their heart and into their life, to know what true freedom, what love is. We thank you, God, for each and every breath that you give us. Every day you wake us up, we will praise you and give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Dorothy would like to say something this morning to us before y'all start singing. Does everybody know who this is? When we first, Robert and I first started here, was about the time that y'all started. David was her husband who just recently went to be with the Lord. He's up there with Sonny and Bernard and Mike and 
all the rest of them. David was an amazing pianist. And Dorothy was faithful by his side. The, my, one of my first memories of her with David was David always sat at the piano. He never got up <laughs> except to leave, come in. But she always kept her arm on his shoulder. When she sang, she was by his side. Um, and they've had a, it's been a, a rough couple of months for them. But he's with the Lord now. Amen. He's celebrating. Amen. First of all, I'd like to give praise and thanks to our Heavenly Father. I would like to thank the pastor for opening up Back to Bethel, coming home for David's celebration. And Mr. Robert and Miss Betty and all the cards and the love that I received um, from this body of Christ. My biggest heart's desire was for a worship service, and I think those of you that were here can attest that God showed up. There was salvation that happened Tuesday, and for that I am so grateful. I am ever so grateful that we got to come home to back to Bethel one more time. And Miss Debbie sent a card this week and it said, in your darkest hour. Well, this truly was my darkest hour at this point in life that I'd ever walked through. But even the morning at 3.51, Friday a week ago when I got that call, April Lee had rapid response all the way there. I said, Lord, I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your son, Jesus, for my salvation, Lord. And that's what got me down. And that's what has me standing here today. And Pastor Jeremy can attest to this. Um, the word reads that God is his peace, peace surpasses all understanding. And I assure you that it does, or I could not be standing today. I want to thank Mr. David Wallace for being here Tuesday, um, for just showing love to, to people from Virginia and other places, people that you all have never had the opportunity to meet and met with in our lives. But I thank God for souls being saved that day. And I thank Pastor Jermaine Smith. I think a lot of you know him, came um, and done David's service. And I said, Pastor Jermaine, last Sunday evening when we met, I said, minister what's on your heart, but I want a worship service because this is God's house and his people coming together. And I assure you that there are people that put their foot through that door Tuesday that didn't know the Lord. And I assure you they probably wouldn't have come in a church. But because of the celebration of our Father and the life that he has given David and I in the ministry, they were ministered to. But I want to say that I love you all and thank you for everything that you have always done for David and I. You know, just because we don't worship together in the same physical house doesn't mean that we're not family. Let's praise God.
straight ahead of God's own line. If what you're riding in don't flow, my fate will step out of the boat. Try walking on the water, turn stumbling blocks to stepping stones. Just keep your eyes upon the master. Just safely home So that never stop the captain From bringing his crew safely in Yeah, he's the light man and the lighthouse And to the long ship he's their friend One day an awful storm was raging Fear gripped the hearts of all on board but then old Peter saw vision. He said it looks just like the Lord. Lord, if I should sure let me come to you. Oh, Peter cried with voice of hope. When old Peter got his answer, by faith he stepped out of the boat. He went walking on the water. Stumbling blocks and stepping stones. Keep your eyes upon the master, and he will lead you safely home. Storms that never stop this captain from bringing his crew safely in. Yeah, he's the light man and the lighthouse, and to the long ship he's their friend. Though the storms may rise and the winds may blow, we know the master of the sea today. Amen. I'm 
free. Well, I'm a soldier in an army that never has known to be. Oh, my greater, greater, greater is he in me. Sing it with me. Oh, greater, greater, greater is he in me. Oh, I'm singing and I'm shouting because I'm happy and I'm free. I'm a soldier in an army that never has known to be. Oh, my greater, greater, greater is he in me. I'm a soldier in an army that never has greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world amen that's why we sing and praise today because he kept us safe in the eye of the storm amen I was shackled by a heavy burden Be It touched me And now I am no longer the same Aren't you glad today that he touched me Oh, he touched me And oh, the joy still floods my Because something happened And now I know He touched me and made me whole Oh, since I met this blessed Savior And since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. Oh, I will shout it while eternity rolls. I don't know about you today. But he touched me, oh, he touched me, and all the joy still floods my soul, because something wonderful happened, and now me and made me whole. How many can testify today and say, oh, something inside me happened. Oh, and now I know how he touched me. on Wednesday night with a guitar and uh, I didn't bring a guitar today I've never sang with this track before so I might make a mess if I make a mess we'll just let the music play on out you've been
been in the storm and it seems like forever for oh, your night of confusion has been oh so long your ship has lost anchor and the storm got you drifting just hold on to Jesus and ride out your soul Remember his promise, promise keepers. He said, I'll never forsake you. Though the waters are raging, they'll do you no harm. Don't give up your battle, for your answer is coming. Just hold on to Jesus and ride out your storm. Ride out your storm. God's right there with you. You may not feel him, but you're not.
rescue for sinners The ransom from heaven Jesus Messiah Lord of all All I have is in you say every time I get up here just so I got to say something. I am a blessed man, highly favored in God. For God to turn me around from stage four cancer, carcinoma cancer, and there's no cure for it, y'all. It'll be cancer free standing here this morning. Just, just know that every day that you live, you are blessed. And let me tell you something, you can never outdo God. And you know what? I ain't never prayed a prayer that God didn't answer. I've never shed a tear that God couldn't dry. I want to say to my son Trevor and to Alex, I'm glad y'all back at home at church. I'm getting to see my grandbabies. Pray for two years. be able to spend time with my grandbaby. Week before last, I got to play with him running around. But you ever been in my trailer? Some of you know how that little thing goes around, like get around and around and around and around. The kids love running around and around. But I got to play with them boys and watch them play with the car and everything, and it meant so much to me. And, you know, there was a time during this cancer that I wanted just to go ahead and die. It hurt so bad. Sometimes I thought maybe I'd just blow my brain out. He still loves me. <laughs> I thank God 
God, I got a church I can go to you know, where you can feel love. I know that people love me. I got a pastor who loves me. I got a wife who loves me. We might not believe everything exactly what we're saying, but you know what? It's all about God anyway. It ain't about me. It ain't about nothing but God. But I just want to say I am so thankful that my wife got to heal the COVID this week. <laughs> I'm thrilled to death, y'all. Whenever mama's down, everybody's down. You hear me? <laughs> but I'm telling you, y'all, God's a good God. All you got to do is tell him what's on your heart and your mind, and he'll make a way out of no way for you every time. Isaiah 54, 17 said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against thee, thou shalt condemn, because this is the heritage of the saints of God. And he gave me that promise. And you know what? The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Great is our God, 
done. Come on, say to me, how great is our God. No, we'll see how great, how great. I'm going to tell you, when I went, I went, I went to get a CAT scan Wednesday, Thursday went to my lung doctor, and I said, about how, what are you going to take to oxygen six blood tests? He said, six months, how many months have you been on it? I said, three. He said, two months, we'll take it. I said, what? He said, she's got a heart on the door. Me, me, me and Brother Noel was at the cornhole that past Saturday. Talking, he placed his hand on me. And we started praying. And I felt really felt the Holy Spirit. And I went, when I went to the doctor, told me, Mr. Dolan, I said, Do you believe in power of prayer? I said, I believe so. And he said, Yeah, he said, I do. He said, I understood that. I believe that God wants us to do the work. And if we can't stand up and give him praise on the small things in life, Preacher, you going to preach today? Well, we're going to try to. 106 in attendance today. Y'all, yeah. y'all talking about, that's why the, the number is now 150. I go to the roof at 150 again. Sunday shoes, suit, tie and all. Amen. Oh, we, we're going to try to get it, preacher. Get it. Don't just get it. Amen. Uh, I want to welcome our uh, some guests today, Miss uh, Sheila Kaiser and her daughter Haley. Good to see you guys. Um, Miss Amy Cooper and her daughter's here today. Good to see you. And uh, uh, Dylan Kato, is that correct? Good to see you today. And uh, your your better half. Amen. Good to see you. good to see Wes and Katie back in the house today. Uh, who, who else might be here for the first time? Raise your hand. Anybody else? First time? There's one. 
Oh, good to see you today. She ain't bashful a bit. I can tell that already. <laughs> Not a bit. She, she's going to fit in just fine around here. <laughs> we are, uh, Brother Robert and Sister Debbie, we, uh, myself, we sat down, and, and my wife sat down and ate dinner last night, and then uh, we, we, we ex- discussed a vision going forward. We got to have a vision. <laughs> Without a vision, we will perish. Um, I, I assure you, as the pastor of this church, that God has given me a vision of what this church can be and what this church should be. Now, my biggest obstacle is to get the rest of you to see my vision. And let's all work together in one accord, in one purpose. Everybody pulling in the same direction. Our whole Sunday school this morning was about that. Teamwork, making the dream work. And that's what we need in this house. Amen? Amen. Everybody working together for Listen, it's not to promote the pastor. It's not to promote the church or the building or the people thereof. It's to put God high, lifted high above all others, that he and he alone may be glorified. Amen? Amen. That if we came for any other reason today than to give God glory and give God praise, our coming was absolutely in vain. If you came to be seen or to be heard, you may leave at any given time. I'm just going, because it ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's about God and Him alone. Amen. That we can lift Him up. God said, if I be lifted up, I will draw. Listen. You, you don't have to do it. God will draw all men unto him. But we got to lift God first. Amen. Show the love of the Father to everybody that walks through the doors of that church. Well, what if somebody came, this is the first time ever that they came to church. And this may be what they base their opinion of church on. So we need people here that's going to make people feel loved and welcome. And they got to want to come back. Amen. Thank the Lord today. We all went through a storm this week. And, and, and thank God that no one, we had no loss of life within the family of our church. That's not saying that there was no loss of life in this state because there was. Uh, a loss of livelihood. Uh, Chimney Rock has been completely demolished. There, there's people that have put probably their whole life savings into their businesses along that little scenic route of number, uh, I guess that's number nine in, in uh, Chimney Rock that runs up through there, completely wiped out, and so their, their way of livelihood is now gone. I won't miss Amanda to come and sing a song today in the eye of the storm. Brother David. Somebody wake David up. Miss Angela, I think it's on the computer. He abandoned ship today. SOS. SOS.
And when a sickness takes my child away, then there's nothing I can do. My only hope is to trust. I trust you. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the world, you calm my soul. You alone. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. I'll put you on the spot this morning. That's I'll I'll I'll, I'll wear that because. I asked her at like 9.20 this morning if she could do that. God got glory out of it anyway. We, we had the wrong words and without rehearsing. It's all right. You come to church here, you better be fly by the seat of your britches sometimes. We ain't got no program, no format. In the eye of the storm, he remains in control. In the book of Acts, chapter number 27, we began to read about how Paul was sailing around Italy on a prisoner ship. Amen? Paul spent most of his life in prison. That's where he wrote most of the chapters and the books of the Bible that he wrote was probably pinned down in, in some dark and, and desolate prison where the walls were, were damp and, and wet and rats were probably running around and they were probably feces and all that good stuff in the prison cell sounds like a place where you could praise God huh now no wait a minute <laughs> some of us have been in Union County's jail hello somebody and it wasn't God that we was afraid for <laughs> praying to talking to or giving him glory. Hello. Most of us was like, get me out of here. Couldn't wait for that time to pass. We were in every other mindset except for giving God glory. But not Paul. Paul was in prison and was writing all of these encouraging words that may minister to our hearts and souls on days like today. In this episode, Paul was on a little boat. Guess what that boat's name was? Alexandria. We have an Alexandria here today. Miss Alexandria Alexander. Right? I ain't throwing no shade your way. But we have one here named Alexandria. The boat's name was Alexandria. It was a prisoner's boat. And, and they were sailing. Been sailing for several days. And they encountered stormy weather for several days and Paul tried to warn them that the big storm was on the way how many pastors are standing in the church house today trying to warn the people that Helene was nothing compared to what storm will be coming if you are found not standing in favor with God on that day there's a storm coming that you or I will not be able to withstand unless we are saved by the grace of God. And I have stood here for the last five years and tried to tell you about that day, that dreadful day that God is coming back. Amen? And you say, well, Pastor, how was that a dreadful day? Oh, it's, all, it's not for all of us. For some of us, it's a day of redemption. It's a day that we have longed for, that we will leave this world behind and head for heaven. But it's not a good day for everybody. Because the people that decided to neglect, to yield to the warning, and went ahead and kept sailing anyway, 
just the way that they thought that everything was going to be just fine their entire life. They faced a storm that they couldn't even stand up to. So this boat that they was on, they come through a few little storms and thought, oh, this ain't nothing, right? It was like Lieutenant Dan on Forrest Gump. You call this a storm? Don't tempt God. Because whenever you begin to tempt God, he will show you a storm. When you ask God, is this the best that you can do? He will show you what the best is that he can do. He will send a storm to you that will destroy the boat that you're riding in. Hello? Verse 14, they had, they had just come through some of the storms and they had encountered a southerly breeze that was pushing them northwardly. And they were able to, to even drop the sails. They thought that they had made it. Hello? There's a lot of people that think that they have obtained. That's what it says in verse 13. The south wind blows softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose. Losing thence, they sail close to Crete. They, a lot of people have let their guard down because they think they have accomplished what they set out to do. We're, we're in the short rows now. We, we've made it. We, we've accomplished the things that we set out to do. But it ain't over until it's over. Just when you think that you've made your mark, that you've, 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 you've succeeded in life and you've accomplished everything that you set out to do, there's a storm that'll hit you out of nowhere. Verse 14 says, But not long after there arose against a tempest-tossed wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. That means they had to make a lot of repairs. Hello? Which, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, they strake sail, and so were driven. And being, and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day, we lightened the ship. That means they had to start throwing things overboard. They, they realized that they were too weighted down to survive the storm. That there are some folks in here today that have allowed things of this life to weigh you down. And I've got to warn you today that if you don't lighten the ship, you're going to sink. If you don't lighten the ship, You'll never make it through the storm. That's why the Bible says that we need to cast our cares upon the Lord. Whenever things are, are burdening you and have you down and they have you stressed, depressed, and anything but blessed. We got to give that to God. And I mean give it to Him. Don't walk back dragging it behind you talking about, well, I'll deal with this in a little while. Uh-uh, you left that at the altar. So leave it there and quit trying to carry it around. You'll never make it through the storm. The third day we cast out their own hands and lacking tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. How many of you have ever had hope that the storm was almost over just to have a doctor to come in and say there is no hope and it was taken away when, when somebody that we, we've accomplished things in our life and somebody comes in and starts to tear those things that we have built down and we lose hope but after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them <laughs> like this Here's what he said. Sirs, you should have listened to me. Is that what that says? That's what it means. You should have hearkened unto me. You should have listened to me and not loosened from Crete. We, we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have picked up anchor and left that place. We should have stayed there until the storm had passed. See, right now we're, we're running around trying to do things on our own when we should still be anchored somewhere. 
We, we're trying to run around and figure out things on our own, and we should have never left the place that we were anchored at. <laughs> y'all, y'all, I have told you guys for months and months and months that people that have left this place of fellowship would return. And we're seeing faces come back into the fellowship of this church, so don't act surprised when they come walking in. I told you they were coming. But for these folks, they're, they're beginning to realize, listen, that they should have never left Anchor. Hello? They went through some storms, and when, we, when they come back in, we need to take our towel and dry them down. Maybe even dry some tears from their eyes. And tell them, no, listen, and not walk to them like Paul. Paul just said, I told you so. Did he not? Paul said, if you don't listen to me, you'd have never encountered this storm. But they didn't listen. But you know what? Dry them off anyway. Wipe their tears anyway. Put a robe around their neck. And a ring upon their finger. For our folks that was dead are now alive. Hello? Mm. Paul said, if you'd have listened to me and not have loosened from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort to you, now I tell you, to be of good cheer. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Be of good cheer. Don't worry. Be happy. Be in the blessings of God. Be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship she is gone y'all sit down right there for just a minute ain't nobody gonna die but the ship she's done hello a lot of times God allows us to go through the storms of our life allowed it did you hear me what kind of God is that Willie it's a loving God he allows people to go through the storm because there are some wayward souls that would not return to the haven of rest have they not experienced a storm in their life there, there's people out here listen God will use a storm to turn you around God will use a storm to turn people back to God. In the aftermath of it all, there's people in western North Carolina today that are opening up their eyes and still seeing that the mess of the storm, the remnants of Hurricane Helene is still laying out there all around them. The water is not gone down yet. The debris is still laying in the streets. And they have often questioned, God, why have you allowed me to go through such a storm? God will remind them, he said, when's the last time you called on my name? Hello? See, God giveth, and the Lord taketh it back away. That's the word. And it, how does that verse end, Brother Willie? It don't stop right there. It says, blessed be the name of the Lord. He gives and he takes it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We, we got to listen, even in the good times and in the bad times, give God glory and praise. In, in the eye of the storm, even though the winds are blowing, the rain is falling, and we don't know which direction that we're even sailing in sometimes, God will use that storm to redirect your ship and bring you back to the place where you should have been the whole time. Sometimes God has to use things. What we can read in, in the book of John and Luke and Matthew, they almost all read the same. Hello, somebody says he constrained his disciples constrained them that means he sent them he ordered them to leave and to drive off into the storm why because it was in the storm of their life that they saw Jesus walking on the water 
It's in the storm of your life that you will open your eyes and realize that your lifeguard, he can walk on water. The waters may be over your head, but they are always under his feet. Sometimes he will, he will send you into the storm. Listen, there's a couple of reasons. One, to get your attention. God will send you into a storm just so, but because you'll have to face the wrath of that storm. And in the wrath of the storm, you'll begin to call on one that you probably hadn't spoke to in quite a while. Amen? Well, 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 what, well, what about the ones preaching that pray every day, okay? It'll strengthen their faith. In the eye of the storm, your faith will either increase or decrease. To be or not to be is what your faith will become. It will either grow by mountainous margins or it will fail flopping at your feet. Our faith, listen, it's more than, than, than just words. It's when we put it into action. Whenever everybody else is running around taking cover and they say, are you not scared? And you say, of what? There is no storm that is not under my God's feet. There's no wind that he cannot speak to and say, peace, be still. There's nothing in our life that should get us excited except for the praise of Almighty God. <laughs> we was at work one day and they were, they were trying to bleed down the pressure on the big tank outside and they brought this, this big old, uh, they call it the red dragon and it, they light it off on top and it blows about a 20 foot flame out of the top of that thing right there. And, and it, just, it just sounds like a jet engine going off. And this, this lady, she comes into the office and she says, there's a fire out there. And I was sitting over there playing on my, I knew the fire was out there, y'all. I was playing on my phone. I said, a fire out where? She said, out there. I said, out there? She said, yeah. And I walked over and looked out the window and I said, oh, my goodness. Woo! We... <laughs> And I went and dove behind the counter. That lady went out the door. <laughs> running. And I laughed. And the girl sitting behind the computer, she was about, she couldn't even hardly breathe. She was laughing so hard. And I had to go back out the door and get her. I said, come on back in here. And I said, that, that's supposed to be out there. She said, Lord, you had me scared to death. You know what the girl behind the computer told her? She said, if you ever see Jeremy run, you better try to catch him. I don't get excited. In my life, I have faced what other people run from. And I run to it. Hello? When you, are, when you become rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ, and troubles come your way, you won't tuck your tail and run. You'll gird up yourself. You'll put on the whole armor of God. And instead of running from it, you'll begin to run to it. Amen. Listen, and you'll say, no weapon, Brother Frank, formed against me shall prosper. No tongue that rises against me is going to prevail. I come in the name of Jesus. I, I don't have no sword, David said. I don't have no shield. But I come in the name of the Lord. When you get to the place in your life when you can start running into trouble and not running from it, you have arrived. Hello? God will use the storm of your life to test your faith. Ask Jonah. See, in Jonah's lifetime, he was given a challenge and a task and a test and a job to do. But instead of him running to the situation, Jonah ran from the situation. And we all know what happened to Jonah. He was swallowed by, don't say well, a great fish. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be playing too much. He got swallowed up by this big old fish. And he was, he was fish bait. Ooh ha. Y'all remember that from Finding Nemo? Fish bait. Ooh ha. Scarface. I 
I forgot why I was even at right now. So instead of running from what God has called you to do, run to it. Instead of fearing it, embrace it. And you say, well, you know what? If God brings me to it, God's going to bring me through it. Hello? God will use the storms of our life to increase our faith. Do, did you ever un, know what happened to Paul? How he got out of prison? I found it out. Verse 44. Is it 44? Did I give you 40, 40, 41? Whatever the next one is. And falling into a place where two seas met, that ship we was talking about, it got stuck. It ran aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, and the hinder part was broken with violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. That's what happened to Paul. He escaped the ship by being able to swim. Hello? If they told me to get off the boat today, I'm in sad trouble. For I cannot swim. But what I can do is find me something that floats. Yeah, that didn't work either. I tried that. We got to grab a hold of something that's going to float. I think there was a movie one time called Hope Floats. Hello? So if you're in the storm of your life and, and the ship is going to sink, and somebody says, swim for it, and you look back and say, I can't swim, <laughs> you better grab a hold of something that can float. Well, what if I can't find nothing? We should all have hope. If hope floats, then grab a hold of hope and float to safety. I might be just out there bobbing along on a piece of uh, the ship right here. Just Every, Paul goes swimming by and be like, what's up? Just out here floating on a piece of wood that came by my way. Aren't you glad? That whenever the storm comes about, and listen, they, you have no hope left. Got to send hope floating by. And you can grab a hold of something. The anchor a hold, hello. Won't the anchor hold, Jerry Parker? Hope floats. And it will lead you safe to land. I don't know what you're holding on to today. But I'd hold on to Jesus. Everything in this world will let you down. It'll fail you. Sometimes in, in the storm of your life, you'll realize what floats and what don't. Hello? Grab a hold of something that's going to lead you to safety. You can always grab hold of Jesus. I'm sitting here today talking about the storm. Not everybody came out of this storm this week unscathed. Some of us took a loss. Come here, Bo. I I'm fixing to help this young man. In more ways than one. I asked Bo this morning. Bo had a tree fall on his car. Had a car come out, Bo. It's pretty much mashed. A big tree mashed his car. Bo only had liability only. So there's no insurance that's going to cover his car. Amen. 
God's going to make a way. I can't tell you how that way is going to come about just yet, but it's, it's going to come about. But I, I talked to Bo this morning in Sunday school, and I asked him, I said, was that car like sentimental to you? He said, a little bit. He said his brother gave it to him before he went to the Navy. So he had a sentimental connection with that car a little bit. I, I was even told by a certain young lady, I ain't going to call her name, but she's sitting around here. She said, Bo got angry. He was punching the car. Bo, did that help the situation in? Oh, you feel better though, didn't it? Been there myself, my friend. But I'm fixing to help you. I'm, I'm fixing to explain something to you real, real quick. And I want all y'all to realize this too. Come here, Turtle. Probably never even thought about this, but I'm fixing to enlighten you somewhat. Do you love turtles? I mean, I mean, I mean, y'all kind of. So in our life, there's people that we love. And sometimes the death angel comes to take that person away. You hear me? But in the eye of the storm, but when that angel comes to take the turtle away, there was somebody that offered your car instead said that you can keep turtle safe with you. Hello? We, we, you see, we, we might sit there and fuss because Bo might have got mad because he lost the car. But what he didn't realize, it could have been the loss of life. He could have been in the car. But he was in the house. Hello, somebody. See, you could be sitting outside today, but you're in the house today. You're safe today. You could still be out in the store, but you are safe today. Yeah. Only by the grace of God. Yeah. And we need to give God, listen, uh, how am I going to praise God? He tore up my car. Praise Him anyway. God has another plan for your life. We, we are here today because of God's grace. So but don't be mad that God took your car could have come to take turtle but God made a trade and I think you come out on top hello y'all go sit down you're not mad no more about your car now are you Bo um oh why not Willie say why not say why not just say why not okay Joe say why not Okay, Robert, say why not. Um, who else? Brother Robert, say why not. Um, Brother Rick, say why not. Who am I? Oh, Brother James, say why not. Kyle, say why not. Okay. I got the first turn of dollars toward his car. Okay. She got one too. This church has bought people cars before. And we'll do it again. You say, well, preacher, I ain't got $100. Maybe you got $2. Maybe you got $5. But we're going to fix this problem. We're going to fix it right quick like. Let, let me, and let me tell you why that, that has been said. Because Bo let his job go because they wanted him to work on Sunday. He says, Sunday's made for going to church. And we all know when we take a stand for God, the devil's going to tempt you. The devil's going to try you. The devil's going to come against you. And that's when the people of God, y'all see them coming together. That's when the people of God come together. Listen, I, I'm not asking you to, to give what, what is uncomfortable for you. Help this young boy out. Yeah, come on. And, and once you don't collect here, we're going to find a way. We're going to find a way. We'll have cornhole tournaments or whatever. Car shows. I'll take you.